Ladies and gentlemen, gentlemen and ladies, ladies and gents, I said earlier that I was tired, so I put the link up for the video, and it was the wrong link, but it's okay. I changed it. I corrected it. The video is up. All of you who downloaded the first document, go back and download from the link that's going to be attached to this video. Download it again. Let me tell you why that document, in my opinion, is the greatest thing I've ever done, and I've never seen anybody do anything like it. That document can be used for student loans, car loans, home loans. It can be used for disputes against landlords. It can be used for disputes against banks. Let's say somebody comes in and they take your bank, I mean, they take your property through foreclosure. Let's say they did it 10 years ago. Let's say they did it 15 years ago. Let's say you went to court and the court ruled against you or the court issued you a citation saying that you need to pay this fee, this fee, this fee. They issued a judgment against you. Let's say... You've been convicted. You've been in jail for the last 25 years, and you're guilty of murder. You did the murder. You did the crime. But they didn't tell you all these other things. They didn't tell you they were violating your rights. Let's say you've been unemployed or you've been homeless for the last 25 years. That document is you. Doesn't matter what your situation is. Whatever problem you've had with government, I guarantee you this document is the document you need. It is that universal. Now, you tell me that somebody else has done something like this before, and I will call you a liar. I told you, I've been doing this for 40 years, 41 now. Literally, this is what I've been doing. I've been doing nothing but studying their game and trying to figure out how to rebut their presumptions. So as I did in the video earlier today and showed you guys how Congress admitted that the law that they passed, the Trading with the Enemy Act Amendment of 1933 was unconstitutional because it did not follow the normal constitutional process. It was not done according to the law. It's called the legislative process. They did not follow the legislative process, so it is void of process. Look up the phrase, void a process. Hold on, let's ask chat GPT. Y'all hold on. Y'all hold on a second. We asked the question. Now let's hear the answer. The phrase void of process typically refers to a situation where a legal or procedural action is deemed invalid or non-existent due to the failure to follow prescribed procedures or requirements. In legal terms, this can mean that a particular process, such as a court proceeding or the issuance of a court order, is considered invalid because essential legal formalities were not observed, or the process was not conducted in accordance with the law. For example, if a court issues an order without proper jurisdiction or without giving a party the opportunity to be heard, that order could be described as void of process. In essence, void of process suggests that the legal or procedural step lacks legal effect or authority, often making it unenforceable and subject to being set aside or ignored by those to whom it would otherwise apply. Okay, now y'all hold on. Got another question. One second. Ladies and gentlemen, I simply asked the question, what happens if a member of Congress introduces a bill and fails to put their name on the bill or they fail to follow? Hold on. To follow the legislative process okay what happens is this void a process let's see what he says he ain't talking y'all and i'm i'm not happy with that because he's supposed to be talking so we're going to wait for him to finish. If the United States Congress or any state legislature enacts a law without following the prescribed legislative process, such as failing to have the law introduced by a member of Congress or not putting the name of the sponsor on the bill, several consequences can occur, depending on the specific procedural requirements and legal challenges that may arise. Legal challenges and judicial review, the law could be subject to legal challenges on the grounds that it was not properly enacted. This could lead to a court reviewing the process by which the law was passed. If a court finds that essential procedural requirements were not met, it could declare the law invalid or unconstitutional. The principle of judicial review allows courts to invalidate laws that do not adhere to constitutional requirements. Legitimacy and enforcement issues, a law passed without adhering to the required legislative process may face legitimacy issues, which can impact its enforcement. If the procedural irregularities become public knowledge, it could lead to resistance from the public as well as from the entities responsible for enforcing the law. 
corrective legislative action. In response to the discovery of procedural errors in the enactment of a law, the legislative body may need to take corrective action. This could involve reintroducing the bill through the proper channels, ensuring that all procedural requirements are met before it is passed again. Impact on public trust. Procedural irregularities in the legislative process can undermine public trust in the legislative body and the legal system as a whole. Ensuring transparency and adherence to procedural norms is crucial for maintaining the integrity of legislative processes. Presidential concerns. Failing to address procedural errors in the enactment of legislation can set a concerning precedent for future legislative actions. It underscores the importance of vigilance and adherence to established procedures by members of the legislative body, legal scholars, and the public. It's important to note that the specific outcomes depend on the legal framework. Oh, shut up. Ladies and gentlemen, it's called void of process. It does the same with the courts as with you. You fail to follow the process, such as following a lawsuit. You fail to file certain documentation, then you lose automatically. The law does not apply. You've heard the phrase, this law does not apply. Well, the law is invalid because Congress admitted in 1973 that it was invalid. Any subsequent actions done after the initial law that was attached to the law, those 470 laws that Congress said were done without the normal constitutional process, are all invalid. That's what they were saying, but nobody paid attention. Are y'all paying attention? So you're not challenging that, but yes, you are. But at the same time, you're not because you're just going after the insurance. You just, they didn't give you the insurance. So what are you doing? You're just simply sending out a letter. Hey, I just need your bond information. I'm bringing a claim against you. And since you have to be insured, I'm bringing a claim against your bond. So I just need the information for the bond. You know, the name of the company that handles the bond, the bond number, the address for the company that handles the bond, the phone number, and the contact name of the person. Oh, and I also need the value of the bond. What's the, the amount of the bond? That's all you're asking. Go back and listen to what I just said. That's all you're putting in a letter. You're not putting all the other junk that so many of you are so accustomed to putting. Just do a simple template. Do a simple letter. I'll even have ChatGPT do a letter for y'all because some of y'all are just so lazy. That's You heard what I said. Some of y'all are just so lazy. Don't worry about being lazy because I done did all the work for you. Look, many of you are not going to understand the value of the document, and I can't help that. I promise you I can't help that. But the fact that you're sitting at home whining and crying and talking about, I don't know. I just had somebody contact me about their Treasury Direct account, saying they see all of this stuff going on with Treasury Direct account, and they don't know what to do. Well, guess what? I just told y'all. Gave you a video. Did a document for you. Use that document. Go and find out what's in your stuff. What's in your wallet? Well, go find out. That's what the document is for. You ain't got to do no Freedom of Information Stupid Act request. That's the Administrative Procedures Act. You don't have to comply with the Administrative Procedures Act. Administrative Procedures Act is for administrative agencies. You are not an administrative agency. So why are you complying with a stupid Administrative Procedures Act? That act is for them. The Freedom of Information Act is under the Administrative Procedures Act. Stop following these stupid codes, people. Start taking control. You want to gain access to the securities held in your minor account? You want to get yourself recognized as being exempt? Stay away from me. Do not detain. Then take the document and read it for what it is. Sorry, I'm a little upset because somebody said that I'm a scammer, that I'm sitting up here trying to defraud y'all. All of these hours, all of these hours, all of this time, all of this energy, all of this fatigue, and I'm now getting ready to go down to my neighbor's house, the neighbor I gave one of the dogs to, the cutest dog I had, well, that dog gonna grown up, y'all. Name is Bear. They call him Bear because he looks like a bear. But he is a cute dog. He came over yesterday. He said, hey, he ain't supposed to be out. He's supposed to be locked away. You see, I let my dogs out the same as he let his out. But he's away from the area. So he wants me to go over there and make sure to get his clothes and make sure they're in the yard. So I'm gonna go. I got things to do. I have a meeting to go to in a minute. But I'm going to do that for my neighbor. Why? Because he's my neighbor. He helps me out. He came and did a favor for me. Now I got to go do a favor for him. I got to. Why? On the strength. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm doing this for you guys, not just simply because I'm one of Jehovah's Witnesses. I'm supposed to help my neighbor. I'm supposed to love my neighbor. I'm doing this for you because nobody else is doing it for you. Are you understanding what I'm saying? So don't go through the document and change things. Just fill in the part you need to fill in. We'll talk more about this. Hey, greatest document ever made.